Hi there, I'm Theo and today I want to share with you um, how you can get more enjoyment out of your wood turning by using a lady fingernail grind spindle gouge. Here's the gouge, uh, it's got swept back sides and that's just to keep them out of the way. Um, if you're coming up to a right hand cut across this way, if you had a large wing it can catch and spin around. With this particular grind you can come right up to a square and uh, the likelihood of you getting a catch is minimized dramatically. Underneath the tool, what I've done is just on the grinder, just taken off a little bit of that sharp edge and polished it. I sharpen with the Tormek sharpening system and to get this shape I use the setting JS2, P55 and hole B. I'm going to show you now how you can make a really clean cut across the grain with the fingernail grind gouge. Over here is the diagram. Um, this is a representation of the gouge itself and the tip. I've broken it up as a clock. When I'm going to make a cut and slice the end of the wood or across the grain, I always align the tool at 12 o'clock and start the cut, rotate the tool slightly and continue on working towards the radius. It's really important that the tool starts right perpendicular to the work and follows the radius on the way in. You can see here how rough the cut is after parting the end off. Now let's see what the spindle gouge can do to that surface. I'll do it one more time. You can see that I've aligned the bevel directly in line with the wood and I'm working towards the radius. A slight twist and it cuts. Using the tool in exactly the same way I can make some very narrow V cuts. Let's have a look at that. can make some wide V-cuts. And again, you can see I've got a really clear finish off the tool. Let me show you some V-cuts on a taper.
By using the spindle gouge with the wings tapered right back, it's so much easier to use and there's a lot less likelihood of a catch. Let me show you how I make beads and coves using the fingernail grind gouge. When the wood is traveling across the lathe between centers and I want to lay the tool down, I lay the bevel first, but I don't engage the tip. I rub the bevel and just before it engages, I roll the tool and engage it around about one o'clock. Then I can rotate the tool further to, to two o'clock or to 1.30 to increase the depth of the cut. And the same goes with the other way. Rubbing the bevel, bring the tool down before the tip engages, roll the tool slightly and pick up the cut around about 11 o'clock um, by rotating the tool uh, anti-clockwise I can increase the depth of the cut or decrease it. Let me show you how that works. I place the tool down, rotate and engage. Place the tool down, rub the bevel, rotate the tool at to one o'clock and engage. It's the rotation of the tool that controls the depth of cut. I'll show you. Deeper cut, shallower cut. Deeper cut, shallower cut. Deeper cut, and then shallower cut. If you want a consistent cut, then keep the rotation consistent. It's time for some beads and coves. This is the cut I talked about earlier when coming up to a per perpendicular edge. You can only do that with a swept back grind. Now for a cove, it's quite simple. Again, rubbing the bevel, bring the tool down before it engages, rotate slightly.
I hope that's given you an insight into why I enjoy using the lady fingernail grind gouge. It can do about 80% of what the suit can do with a minimum chance of getting a catch. And I only take fine cuts. I would rather take three one millimeter cuts than try to take a three millimeter cut. The more cuts you take, the more practice you get, the more you program the muscle memory and the better turner you become. I hope you too can find the enjoyment that I get out of a nice sharp lady fingernail grind gouge. Thanks for watching and remember this, life is too short so we should enjoy the journey, share with others and leave something to show we were here. Catch you next time.